The oceans, the vast blue realm of this planet, are not only the cradle of life, but also one of the most mysterious and magnificent places in nature. Here, life flourishes in diverse forms, and the oceans are the home on which they depend. For centuries, captured fisheries have played a vital role in the fishing industry. However, in our vision of the future, we believe that in hundred years' time, great advances in fisheries will have made traditional fishing methods unnecessary, leading to an increase in the number of decreased ghost fishing gear. Those decreased fishing nets can pose a serious threat to the marine ecosystem. We hope to find a better way to deal with those legacies of our time. So we went to Billingsgate, London's largest seafood market, where fishing is inextricably linked to the fishing industry, and spoke to a number of storeholders, and learned that many fishing harbors in UK are now involved in a program called Fishing for Rubbish, whereby they bring back any fishing gear and nets they find out at sea. And that their own fishing harbor was also involved in a program to use old fishing nets to make flower pads. With their help, we managed to find a seller on eBay who specializes in collecting marine waste and processing it for sale. And with her help, we were able to purchase a large quantity of this girl's fishing net script for our installation. In the production process. We first cut and organize the collected nets, design and arrange them into the shape we need, and then use a huge piece of fine fishing net as the base, cutting it into one meter wide and nine and a half meters long. Then comes the most tedious step of all: use plastic ties to attach the stiffer and thicker nets. To the base night to the connect and the replace the base finite, which will make the overall vertical night stronger and more stable. In our process of replacing the fine fishing night with hard fishing night, we first replace the top and bottom parts of the vertical night so that the vertical night outline could be fixed. So facilitating the production afterwards. Because the area was so large, we had to make the whole vertical net in two parts, and we did the same job twice. The biggest difficulty was that the fine fishing net were very malleable and could easily be deformed during the process of putting them together. So we needed to adjust the width of the net at any time during the process of fixing them to ensure that. The entire vertical net was evenly straight. After replacing all edges, we connected a tailor to hem our vertical net. We used hard banister canvas as a hem for our vertical net, a seemingly simple job that took two tailors eleven hours of work to complete. As the hard nylon fishing net and the canvas is a huge challenge for sewing machine and sewing techniques. After sewing the edges. We purchased a bunch of used fishing nets, and the secondary process the middle part of the vertical net, and also replaced part of the fine net with coarser and harder net to ensure that our vertical nets are stronger and more stable, as well as more aesthetically pleasing in appearance. In the end, we organized a special vertical tournament. In order to showcase our achievements and to promote the feasibility of recycling waste fishing gear, through this environment, we hope to raise awareness of the protection of the marine environment and the need for sustainable development of the oceans.
So how do you feel about this today's special gaming with a special net, which is made of zero fishing net? Yeah, indeed, it's quite special. Like I never imagined we could actually play volleyball on this fishing net. You re like recover from the sea. Generally, it's really fun like to really play on this net. And have you ever heard of the damage that made by the wasted fishing gear to the ocean creatures? Yeah, yeah. Actually, I previously saw some documentaries, and the sea, like some sea creatures, are harmed by the trash that people put into the sea. And I saw a turtle with its shell. The shape of the shell was uh, like constrained by a rope. And as the turtle grow bigger and bigger, it looks really painful for the turtle to, to bear this on, on its shell. I think today's net was special because they had different colors and different textures. So it was a little more difficult to play volleyball, seeing through the fishing net. But um, it felt sort of like fish or more like being in the ocean, um, seeing all the different kinds of nets and all that. Um, I quite enjoyed it, but it's definitely different from the usual. Well, I think today was a very good example of a creative use of a wasted fishing net. Also, you can try and shop more from line caught fish instead of fish that has been caught by nets. So what can an individual to do to make our ocean environment better? Individual could do. Mm. It's very difficult because uh, the fishing industry is very organized. The big companies are expanding their, their, their ships around the world to, to get more uh, product. Maybe individuals can get can start cooperate with kind of foundations, uh, protecting the sea life, and maybe help help them to fight against big fishing companies. The ocean, the last vast wilderness on Earth, is a cradle of life, where every drop of water is full of possibilities. Not only does it endow us with bountiful resources and endless inspiration, it is also an essential building block for human survival. Now, it is time to take action, support sustainable fisheries, participate in beach cleanup, and support the reuse of recyclable waste. Because protecting the marine environment is not only for the ocean itself, but also for our shared future.